Hi, I'm Uncle Sam FM, and this is episode two of my Playing MLS and Football Manager 2020 series. And in this episode, we are going to look at the squad rules. Now, the squad rules can be kind of confusing for those that are not familiar with the league. However, I believe there are some ways we can break it down that do make it a little easier to digest. So first of all, we'll look at how we break down the squad categories in Major League Soccer. So first of all, you have your senior squad, and this is your primary players. These are the guys who are going to see the field the most. These are the players with the paying the highest contracts. You're Generally speaking, your most important players. But then you also have an off-budget squad. These are players who do have value because they can be your the players you are developing for the future. These are players who can give you some depth um, so that if you have an injury or an international call-up, you can uh, use them, play them in matches. So they they do provide some value. And most importantly, they do not count against the salary cap. So when you're managing an MLS team, you have a senior squad and then you have an off-budget squad. Now, all of these players are on the main squad. However, these are simply two categories to kind of help you break down your squad. So looking at the senior squad, these players will occupy the first 20 slots in your squad. So you have a 30-man squad in MLS. The first 20 will be your senior squad, and they will count against the salary cap, which in FM20 in the beginning of the game is $4,240,000 per year. And I'm going to be using the per year format simply because that's how sports works here in MLS in, in the United States. That's what I'm most familiar with. I know a lot of you operate more on a per week basis. So you might have to do a little math, but you do have a, a salary cap and your senior squad. These are the players that count against that. There are several contract types, which we'll look at in a little more detail later in this video. Starting first of all with the designated player. You have two of these and you also can sign one young designated player. Now, in a, and we get to the designated players later in the video. I'll sort of explain the purpose behind them, what they are. A lot of play, a lot of FM players will probably be somewhat familiar with the DP, but we'll still go into more detail on that later. Another contract type in the senior squad is your senior contracts. These are your best players that are not designated players. And then you have the senior minimum salary players. These are your uh, contracts that you give which can be in the off-budget roster unless your full 20-man senior squad is not filled out by DP contracts or senior contracts and I'll dive into that a little more as we get, move in the video in your off-budget squad these are slots 21 through 30 and they do not count against the salary cap now the contract types for your off-budget squad are reserve contracts of which you can have a maximum of six. However, no more than four can be non-homegrown reserve players. So if you have six reserve contracts, at least two of them must be homegrown players and we'll talk about what that is in a moment. The senior minimum salary contract can also be in your off-budget squad. Now this is for players that are not in the first 20 slots. So if you have three designated players and 17 senior contracts, then all of your SMS contracts will go on your off-budget squad. However, if you, if you only have two DPs and 15 senior contracts, that means you only have 17. So then three of your SMS contracts will go on the senior squad, and those players will count against the salary cap. Other players that are on the off-budget squad are anyone with a Generation Adidas contract, and we'll talk about what that is in a moment. So your contract types. First of all, again, designated player. You're again limited to two, and you may sign one young designated player, and these players will count as senior squad players for slots one through 20. Now this is regardless of age, if they are signed to a DP contract, they will be in your senior squad. Now, the purpose behind the DP contract, just to kind of give a brief history, uh, MLS for a long time operated with a pretty hard salary cap and a hard wage cap, meaning you could not sign a player uh, on contract for more than a certain amount. And 
I'll explain a little more of how MLS is structured contractually later in a, well, in a future video. But MLS got to the point where they had grown enough. There was enough interest in the league. The clubs had enough support. And you had investors with enough money that they wanted to start signing players for that would that would require contracts larger than the maximum allowable wage and so what mls did they added a rule so that each team and, and, and when it first started you could only sign one designated player but each team was able to sign a player for more than the wage cap the maximum wage while that player only counted as a maximum wage player against the salary cap and the most famous example is David Beckham in fact when the rule was first put into place it was kind of termed as the Beckham rule as the galaxy wanted to sign uh, sign David Beckham David Beckham was obviously not going to play for a contract as low as the maximum wage in MLS but the galaxy also didn't want to use up their entire salary cap on one player so MLS created the rule to help clubs in the league be able to sign players, marquee players that could bring interest in the league, uh, help the team on the field. And so they put in the designated player rule. Now there are actually three types of designated players. First of all is the simple designated player. This is anyone that's over 24 years old. And from here on, I'll probably refer to them as a DP. The salary cap impact will be 530000 which is the maximum cap impact. Or if you acquire a designated player during the summer transfer window in July, that player will only count $265,000 against the salary cap. So if you sign a player for a con on a contract for $10 million a year, he is only going to count $530,000 against your salary cap. Another type of designated player is the young designated player. And there's actually two types of young designated player. There's one that's between 21 and 23 years old. And their salary camp impact will be $200,000. Or if they're acquired during the July transfer window, it will only be $150,000. And then you have the other young designated player. These are players that are 20 years old or younger. And the only real difference is that their salary cap impact will be $150,000 regardless of when they were signed. So there's not much difference between the two types of young designated player, but it is something that FM recognizes. Now, your next contract type in an MLS senior contract, or in senior squad, is the senior contract. This will make up the largest part of your squad. The entire salary of a senior contract player is going to count against the cap unless you reduce that with general allocation money. I'll explain that in a future video, but each club is given junior allocation, um, general allocation money. And if you're wanting to sign a player to a senior contract, but it's going to push you over the cap. Now, before, when MLS operated with a very hard cap, you would just not be able to sign that player. However, with general allocation money, you can pay his salary down. So whatever you sign the player for, you can give money to reduce their impact against the salary cap. So if you sign a player for $650,000, you can buy it down to where his salary only counts $400,000 against the cap. Senior contract players must occupy the senior squad. They will not, you will not be able to put them on the off budget roster. And the final type of a senior, uh, final contract type of a senior squad player is the senior minimum salary contract. This is an SMS contract. This salary is, will be $70,500. It's, it'll be set at that. You cannot, if they won't accept that amount, then you cannot sign them to a senior minimum salary contract. That's the minimum salary can't go below it and if you go over it then you're not at the minimum salary uh, SMS contract players will occupy an off-budget squad the slots 21 through 30 if the senior squad has 20 or more players now it could be that you have two open slots on the senior squad and you have five SMS contracts well that means two of your SMS contract players will go to the senior contract senior squad and three of your SMS contract players will go to the off-budget squad. It just it allocates it. 
if an SMS contract player is on the senior squad, then that means the entire $70,500 salary is going to count against the salary cap. Now, we, there also is reserve contracts. These players must be under 25 years old. When they hit 25, they are no longer eligible for a reserve contract. Their salary is going to be $56,000 per year, and you can have a maximum of six, and as we said, no more than four non-homegrown players. So you can't have six unless two of them, at least, are homegrown players. And homegrown players are players that you sign from your academy, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, reserve players will occupy the off-budget squad, slots 21 through 30, and therefore, they are not going to count against the salary cap. Generation Adidas contracts, it's really, it's not so much a contract as sort of a status. This is a status that is given to certain players, to the elite players that are entering the MLS Super Draft. Now, it's supposed to be the elite players. Sometimes you'll, they'll, you'll get a GA attachment to a player that's really not very good. And then sometimes there are players in the draft who probably should have been given a GA contract, but they didn't. But either way, a player with the GA status will not count against the cap. That does, that's regardless of what kind of contract you sign them to. And players will graduate from the Generation Adidas status after four years. So once they've been in MLS for four years, their Generation Adidas status is gone and their contract will count against the cap if you have to sign them to a senior contract, to an SMS contract, or a DP. Generation of uh, Adidas players only occupy the off-budget squad. They will not be placed on the senior squad, regardless of the contract type they've been signed to. So again, it's not as much a contract as it is a status. The purpose behind the Generation Adidas contract, just to kind of give you some um, foundation, Obviously, every year, MLS has a super draft where they draft players from college into the teams in Major League Soccer. However, originally, the contracts that these players were being signed to were very low, were not anywhere near their value. And so what started happening is you started having college players leave the United States, go sign with teams in sometimes in the lower levels in Germany, in Scandinavia, where they could make more money than they would in MLS. MLS didn't want to lose these players, and so what they did was they created this Generation Adidas status where you could sign a Generation Adidas player to a contract that sort of cl comes closer to meeting their value, but it also does not punish the team because they their contract does not count against the salary cap. So it was designed as a way to keep young American players in the United States while also not punishing teams for taking risks on, frankly, unknown talents. Now, there are certain player categories in MLS that you have to be aware of. One is the international players. Now, this is a little different than leagues around the world. MLS teams will start with eight international player slots. However, international player slots are an asset. They can be traded to other MLS teams for any number of years, up to five, or even permanently. So you, a team can trade one of their international slots to another team for three, four, five years. For a, they can, and in exchange, they can get a player, they can get a super draft pick. So it's another kind of interesting component. As if you're wanting to build a team full of international players, then you're going to want to try to acquire these slots. And now, if you can, you build your international team with with a sl international slot that only lasts for three years obviously teams are going to value those those uh, international slots and so it can be kind of difficult to pry them away especially the permanent international slots but it does add an interesting dynamic when it comes to negotiating player exchanges in MLS now for the three Canadian teams in Major League Soccer uh, Toronto FC the Montreal Impact and the Vancouver Whitecaps um, players with Canadian international, or sorry, Canadian nationality will not count as international players. It will not; they will not take up one of their international slots. Now, homegrown players is another MLS category that we've mentioned. These are players signed from the club's academy team. Now, there are no limit to how many homegrown players that can be signed. However, in real life, MLS has added something called the homegrown budget. 
and I'm not sure if they've put that into FM yet. I'm not familiar with it. Um, but in in FM, it's still true that you can sign as many as you want. Now, homegrown players can occupy either the senior squad or the off-budget squad. It's really just kind of a designation. It's a, it's a status. Um, so yeah, if you sign them to either to whatever contract you sign them on, it'll that will depend that will determine whether or not they're a senior squad player or an off-budget squad player. Now I've put together a little graphic here that can sort of sort of show you how an MLS squad breaks down. Now in our example here, this club has signed two designated players, and they are international players. They are not domestic, so they are occupying some of the international slots. And then they have a young designated player, also an international player, occupying one of the international slots. And then four senior players that are occupying international slots. And then there are several players, I think about uh, um, 10 or so senior players that are domestics. So these are American players, players or players with American secondary nationality. And so that's kind of filling out the senior squad. But as you can see, <clears throat> there is also one senior player who was signed, who was a homegrown, signed to a senior contract. And then you have a couple of senior minimum salary players. What that means is there were only 18 senior contracts and designated player contracts. So there were two slots left open filled by senior minimum salary players. You also have a senior player who is a Generation Adidas contract. So he, even though he has a senior contract, is on the off-budget squad. And then you see here there's a, another SMS player with an international, he's an international uh, player, so he's a foreigner. And he is also on the off-budget squad because he was signed to an SMS salary. And then this, con this squad would actually be illegal. Um, as you see, there are six reserve players, but only one homegrown. So in this example, if the, when it comes to the squad registration, he's going to have to drop one of those reserve players. So that gives a general breakdown on the MLS squad, and hopefully it helps you to understand a little better how it breaks down. Uh, if you do have any questions on that, please put those in the comments. And in the next episode, we'll start looking at player acquisition. How do you actually acquire players in MLS and Football Manager?